Hello there. I'd like to talk about dead games, but before we begin, do you recognise any of these games on this list? Titanfall 2, The Cycle Frontier, The Culling, Super People, Splitgate, Spellbreak, Shadowline, Rumbleverse, Ring of Elysium, Redfall, Realm Real, Radical Heights, Quake Champions, Predator Hunting Grounds, Post Scrotum, Overwatch 2, Outriders, Ring of it, Multiverse, Hyperscape, Halo Infinite, Dirty Bomb, Blood Hunt, Battlefield Fight, Atlas Bat Anthem? <clears throat> kind of looks like a war memorial, hmm? You know what's crazy? These games released all in the last five years or so. Now, before we begin this analysis, I should make it clear what constitutes as a dead game. Well, only multiplayer games that require you to play with or against other players can be classified as dead. Single player experiences can be played at any point you wish without the requirement of other players. Hence, the player vs player games are called multiplayer. And some very old single player games may be a complete c to get running on a modern system, but that's a problem that can be solved with some ingenious workarounds. Multiplayer games, however, require the game you're passionate about to be in vogue and somewhat popular to sustain a player base to keep the experience engaging or, hell, even find matches, particularly if you're playing from a smaller region around the world. A recent trend in multiplayer releases has been games as a service, aka the server binaries for the multiplayer games are no longer in control of the community of the game itself to host their own servers, but the developers and publishers themselves, leaving players at the mercy of developers keeping the games online and updated. If a project is deemed unprofitable and burning through company money by server hosting, they pull the plug, sometimes even shutting down multiplayer game servers when there's still dedicated but very small communities still playing and supporting their game. In short, a dead game has low or no play account leading to a lack of variety, potentially no further game development, and the eventual shutdown of the servers themselves. There's been so many failed multiplayer games over recent years that have gone just through that, and I've decided to put them all into a tier list of sorts that I created myself to make it a little bit easier to digest just why these games are dead games. The list is straightforward. There's three tiers. S should have been successful due to a plethora of reasons. I guess something like a good game at the wrong time and place, contributing to its lack of word of mouth and awareness. I mean, it happens all the time, right? There was a movie in 1982 that came out called The Thing. And it was completely overshadowed by E.T. the Extraterrestrial by Steven Spielberg. Who would have thought that was a great idea releasing that in the same week? C. Could have been successful, but the developers dropped the ball in some capacity in the release. And F. That's short. The dog shit. It's either a rip-off or so poorly released it's not a surprise at all that it's like, you know, at the bottom of the list here. Now. But, it, it's a, look, get off. Harry, get off my back. Yeah, I know you're the producer. I know you're trying to keep things on track. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that bit. I'll, I'll explain my thoughts on the future of multiplayer gaming at the end. Yeah, Harry, just get him on. Harry! Now that that list makes complete sense and is easily understood, let's begin, shall we? Battlefield 2042. First up, how do we go from this... ...to this? At least this tune accurately represents the broken mess that this game was. A franchise with a tried and true game format that their fanbase expects every three or so years when a new release drops. DICE, or potentially DICE's omnipotent publisher, decided let's get more of that Apex Legends money and basically try to forcefully shove all that crap into Battlefield. Specialists, aka Legends, with quirky personalities. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. Oh, I climbed Everest. It's been all downhill from there. You get it? I am not overconfident. I'm just better than everyone. Now, with teams that you cannot distinguish from one another, the game is set in a dystopian super serious future war now riddled with microtransaction skins. Poorly designed and forgettable maps, topped off with a really boring aesthetic. It should go into S tier because it should have been a super successful installment in the Battlefield franchise with a billion dollar empire behind it, but DICE and EA dropped the proverbial tray of hors d'oeuvres all over into F tier. Dog shit. One of the most depressing releases in my video gaming years. How dare you, good sir? I'll have you know that 12 months after release, the game is finally in a playable state with content promised on release now in the game. It's alive and well, and you know absolutely nothing.
Well, the player count didn't really swing back that much after that. Too little, too late, unfortunately. I think people will wait for the next battlefield to repeat the cycle. The cycle frontier. Hello? What'd you say to me? Oh my god. <sighs> Different dude. Ah, oh, cheating. I knew it. I know. I know. Look, I've got. I've got the sixth sense, dude. I know it. I know it when I'm being cheated in this game. I just knew it. Yes, cheese. Cheating. No, sir. I didn't like it. A cool sci-fi spin on the looter shooter genre that decided to release its million dollar project public without an anti-cheat any kind whatsoever. If you could find your gear on eBay to buy back from the RMT cheaters, you might have stood a chance against the gaming chair gamers. C tier. Even if this game ended up being good, it never stood a chance because of the cheaters. Titanfall 2, a really great single player with a cool multiplayer component that had a great spin on the old school arena game modes. The movement is honestly one of the most fun and skilled behind Quake and Unreal Tournament. It had a loyal niche fan base, but after the developer's battle royale took off with great success, Apex Legends, the after-release tender love and care that most games require to survive long-term had become tumbleweed for Titanfall 2. In its wake was DDoSing and hacking of biblical proportions that it became a game where you had to cheat to play against other cheaters if you could find a server that wasn't already DDoSed. C tier. It might have also helped if they hadn't released it in the week between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty. A swollen brain move of biblical marketing proportions. Please, delete my browser history. Marauders, literally, Space Tarkov. Turn your hats off, you sh I messaged a developer last night, a clip of someone who was clearly cheating. Even though I was standing out in the open, doing questing like an idiot, not using cover, making loads of noise, and repeatedly shooting at creatures, I was shot standing still in the open. Clearly, a bunch, clearly! This game is a broken piece of shit! Right? And like, it's just scuff. And you'll be reminded by the community for the next 10 years that in 20 years time, the game will be in a polished state. Just hang on a little longer. In space, no one can hear you fart. Time for the deluge of battle royales after PUBG became an overnight success. The Ring of My Elysium. Cool. Another battle royale, when battle royale is already oversaturated. Although, it was pretty cool. See, just needed a time travel machine to be relevant in the right time and the right place. Realm Royale, a fantasy medieval take on the BR genre by High Res Studios, who are renowned for making decent games and then totally trashing them post-launch. And you know what? They did exactly that. This game, albeit a little bit cartoonish, attempts at being the next Fortnite, had an ingenious game mechanic that got players moving around the map and rewarded players killing one another instead of just hugging the zones like softies. The forge system, you would gain points by kills and then use them to upgrade at this central point around the map. Maybe the devs panicked it was too complicated for their target audience. So they totally changed the system and made the game a zone camping simulator. And then the player base bowed immediately and moved on, never coming back. They even attempted to relaunch the game with the original designs. Unfortunately, everyone already had a new girlfriend. Hyperscape, a super fast paced movement based battle royale with hit scan aim and skill rewarded for. Yeah, yeah, um, the game died in that sentence. For a battle royale to take off, it's gotta be ghillie suits and hugging circles or nothing. Dead game. C tier. This one hurt. Maybe if it had lowered the skill ceiling a little bit for casuals and not have the entire map look like a copy pasta from City 17 in Half-Life 2, it may have had a chance. Game was a cool attempt though. Blood Hunt. Shark Mob, who developed this, had actually a bit of a banger. Everyone seemed to really enjoy it. I bloody well did. And even big content creators. I want some Fortnite skins in here. Like, I want to be Batman running around. And it had the right pace of super sweat and casual play with reviews and respawns giving people a chance for a second go on the games. However, it was released, rushed with some bullshit ass reload bug that would get you killed in most of your engagements that stayed in the game for pretty much months. 
desinky servers and then cheaters from etch sketch stand invaded it too and it ended up just being too little too late when it came to patching the game when you release a game you go all in or nothing It didn't help that they split the queues more and more with rank modes added for each one. Multiple queues split your player base, people. Focus on one or two modes for your games, developers. You cannot cater to everyone! Super people. PUBG with abilities. Game failed immediately on launch, and three months later, it released again as, you guessed it, Super People 2. For this video, I didn't even bother to check out Super People 2. Call me a fraud. I think it speaks volumes of how little people have steam left in them for games being flipped for a quick buck. F tier. Battlefield 5 Firestorm. It's essentially Battlefield's quick cash grab to get on the Battle Royale trend. It was pretty unremarkable. When you killed a player, they became a loot pinata with all their loot on the floor in a messy pile. Good luck trading armor or meds in a heated battle. This was somehow lazier than Battlefield 2042. F tier. Radical Heights. <laughs> thank you, Roddy, and thank you everyone in our studio audience for being here today. Boy, oh boy, do we have an exciting show for you. We... Is there a term for a stillborn game? F tier. Rumbleverse. Plagued with server issues for a long time and eventually you only played against bots. Not to sound like a conspiracy theorist. However, there's plenty of rhetoric that Epic Games who published this game let it die out. So it wouldn't compete with the breadwinner. That game that makes Epic Games a lot of money. Kinda sounds legit, but I blame Obama though. F tier. Spellbreak. I don't know. Is anyone else getting fatigued by Battle Royale Itis yet? Cool game mechanics, but it's Battle Royale number 125 at this point in the timeline. Could have been good in a unique genre or mode. C tier. Splitgate. Portal meets Halo multiplayer. Really cool. The release was good. Stable servers. Pretty cool idea. But unfortunately, I feel the damage that has been done by Battle Royale at this point. I mean, a lot of damage. A generation of gamers brainwashed into safe space gaming, as I call it. Drop into a map, get lucky with finding better weapons than other players, and use that unequal force on them to win fights. Hug the zone. Win the game by pure luck. Well, that wasn't Splitgate. It was a skill wins game. Maybe it was just 10 years too late, unfortunately, my sweet, sweet Splitgate. Releasing the wrong timeline. Not really sure it's their fault. C tier. Anthem. But that's far enough. No one has to get hurt. Whoa, 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 whoa. All we want is that journal. I know. Talon gave you one job. Make sure you don't get it. Did Talon give you permission to burn it? This game required a quality assurance team. <laughs> Heroes of the Storm. Blizzard didn't take the MOBA scene seriously with Dota and let Valve buy one of the most profitable mod franchises after Counter-Strike. It's okay though, they still have Diablo whales to farm for microtransactions. You know, often in more scrapes and adventures than I can count. That being said, I've never seen anything like this! <laughs> What does a hero truly mean? C tier. Blizzard was too late to the MOBA scene. They released it after the dominance of League of Legends and Dota 2. Quake Champions. 
Quake, the first true 3D FPS game and the first FPS eSport. See that? That's id Software's programmer John Carmack awarding Thresh, a Ferrari, for winning a Quake tournament. This was the 90s and early 2000s, however, and over time the franchise slipped away in the public consciousness as the likes of Call of Duty took over, as the point-and-click adventure land shooter that became the mainstay of FPS. No longer did you need to manage your health and armor, no longer did you need to time your rotations around a map or have a great movement mechanic and aim well. The year is now 2010 and the new normal is point-and-click. No mames, marca el otro. Run around, point and click. Run around, point and click. Skip another six years. And now the new normal is Battle Royales. Camp. Point and click. Clip that. Somebody clip that. Camp. Oh, no. Someone clip it. Point and click. Clip it. Clip it. Clip it. I think you're seeing how the next generation of gamers perceived FPS games, right? Things have changed. So when Quake Champions released in late 2017, absolutely no one knew how to play an arena shooter. Except, of course, the boomers. Most of those guys died in World War One. Strafe jumping. And it's, this seems like the concept's pretty easy. I just have to figure it out. Not only did the game require a lot of effort to learn how to strafe jump, which is a specific way of gaining extra speed momentum by jumping with mouse movement, the game also released ass up with desync issues. What the fuck? What the fuck? C'est quoi ce bug? Broken hitboxes and broken abilities. Abilities in Quake. Well, it made sense. A few years before, Overwatch was a really successful game and it had, you guessed it, <clears throat> microtransactions! All right, here we go. Here we go. Had, it had pressed a button to win abilities. A new addition to the Quake franchise that took at least two years post-launch, or early access, to finally balance in a respectful manner. It's f C tier. I don't know. Like, I love Quake, so I'm too close to this one, but like, it hurts a lot. Like, a lot. Diabolical. Quake Champions 2.0. <laughs> Dirty Bomb. I think people took for granted just how cool this game was. It had a tough learning curve in the beginning, the new players, of course, and uh, I don't know, it was pretty much overshadowed by Overwatch. C tier. Just wrong time, wrong place kind of thing. Redfall. Made by Arcane Studios. There's no way these guys weren't rushed by their publisher, Xbox. I mean, Microsoft, or what, whoever owns all these companies now, it's, it's getting hard to track. I think clips of this game speak for itself. <laughs> FTM. <-tier. laughs> Back for Blood. Why? Play an inferior version of Left 4 Dead. FTM. Outriders. This just seemed like a really dull version of Borderlands. The developers stopped adding content to it and the players faded away. There's potential that it could have been successful long term. I don't know, but like, it seems like one of those one and done kind of playthroughs. But I had to add this in the video because people would spam in the comments if I didn't make mention of this game. I barely touched it. There's a reason for you in itself that gives me credence when I say C tier. Lawbreakers, another game like Quake with a high skill ceiling coming into a market dominated by RNG battle rounds. It had no chance. C tier. Harry, get out the way. What do you, what do you mean the logo won't move? All right, all right, I got an idea. Just, just get out the way. 
Damn, that worked. Natural Selection 2. It's strange. Natural Selection 1 was a big success back in the day. And the sequel came out just before Battle Royales, I guess. And so it really wasn't overshadowed by anything. From my memory of playing Natural Selection 2, it was pretty demanding of new players to learn to play the game while an elitist bunch of players that were established in the first game carried over and dominated the matches and pretty much bullied all the new players to leave their teams for throwing. Much like every other toxic ass team game. No, you This one didn't survive the process for some reason. I know I'm supposed to be the expert here, but I really can't put my finger on this. So abuse me in the comments or email me at I don't give a shit at cloutchasercreatornetworkmanagement.com.org. See you here. Battle Right released the game and then immediately focused on chasing the battle royale trend. FTN. Paladins, an Overwatch clone by hi -Rez. It's fun enough, but it's like a budget Overwatch, I guess. Had a bit of a pop at the start, died off, came a dead game, and then out of nowhere had a bit of a second coming like Christ after a patch. Pretty recently too, but ultimately it's a dead game. You know, like it's it's hanging in there with its niche player base, but you know they want that to be bigger. And for people to have fun in it, like ourselves, you need variety, more players, more things going on. T tier. It's the Overwatch if Overwatch didn't already exist. Halo Infinite. The return of arena shooters, praise be the master queef, maybe even the battle royale killer and a return to form for FPS to become a skill based shooter genre again instead of RNG shooters. Oh. Multiverse, the game. Bad balance and broken servers a common thread among a lot of talk in this video. At this point in the timeline, no one wants to play another glorified beta test for a game anymore. Please release a finished product, game developers and publishers, please! Kiss it, my oh. F tier. Post Scrotum. Uh, I think it's like Hell Let Loose, but like a more inferior version of it. F tier. Next, Atlas. This game has less players than Barbie Adventure Riding Club. Bad servers, bugs, the usual story on release. Again, a common theme among the fat X. <laughs> predator Hunting Grounds. It's one of those games where it's fun playing the Predator solo versus a team of players, but as snooze fest as the human team. C tier. I'm also not sure if this game was ever alive. No. Noskoff? I, I don't even know what this is. It's a really dead game. Darwin Project. Not another battle royale. Jesus Christ. Maybe another timeline. C tier. The Culling. You and 15 other contestants will fight to be the last one standing. So many battle royale. C tier. Overwatch 2. F tier. Well, actually, it's not technically... Uh, calm down. Uh, ...a dead game. It has over, like, 50,000 concurrent... <laughs> it has over, like, 50,000 concurrent... Look, it's still Overwatch 1. And, like, I understand Overwatch really isn't a dead game, but Overwatch 2 was supposed to be a big release of a game, and it ended up being a glorified update with a PvE mode that then they backed out on. So I guess Overwatch 2 was just a patch? That's an F in my books. I, I don't care. Uh, yeah. Company Heroes 3. It would be really cool to see real-time strategy take off again. For any Zoomers who don't know what an RTS is, think of it like a 1v1 game of tennis, but top-down with loads of units and resource control. Easily the chess of PC gaming in the 90s and 2000s, but it kind of died with StarCraft 2, because after that, it was just a clout fiesta of battle rounds. I really don't know what could have made Company Heroes 3 pop. Other than being released 15 years ago on another timeline. C tier. The effort was there, but the world moved on. And now, the final subject of this discussion. A game well made and full of spunk, Shadowline. This game is great. Yeah, it's not bringing anything too crazy new to the table. It's got a PvE mode and a PvP mode. And the PvP mode, a lot of PvPVPs in this, this sentence. It's, it's like a Team Fortress 2 and Overwatch and Dirty Bomb had a mutant baby together. And it just slaps. 
game played smooth, classes were balanced, characters had uh, character, and it definitely had a skill ceiling that rewarded players for getting better. It boggles my mind that this game released to no acclaim at all. This game is pure gaming. The quality is there and their focus wasn't microtransactions, but but making a game that felt like a banger the whole time you played. S tier. Well, actually, the reason why Shadowline was not successful- What are you doing? Get out of the way, man. Overwatch is a more superior team versus team game. Could you please move, dude? Dude, dude, we've already been through this. Dude, can you please move? You know, your YouTube thesis is completely inaccurate. And I'll have right. you know, you have absolutely... Harry, Harry, could you hand me that big gun over there? Cheers. ...creates a realm. Please, remove your account. I will report you. Robert, I <clears throat> On that note, maybe you should consider pressing this button and the little bell. You should really consider pressing the button. This really should have been successful, but I guess a lack of marketing and opening the game in spaced out betas really didn't do it any favors. Especially in a multiplayer scene donated by these three battle royales for years on end. So, how does a multiplayer scene with dead fetus syndrome turn around its ways? How does it overcome an industry dominated by these three giant battle royales churning out the same old content for years on end, while players bitch and moan that multiplayer is boring? Well, vote with your feet. Stop purchasing half ass games and battle royales and source something with depth. And if the current releases have nothing to offer, then the answer might just be in your Steam library. You should really consider pressing the button. <laughs>